Hello again. This is another video for my advanced class um, as they move into the eighth grade standards. This is part of the exponents unit. In the last video, we talked about multiplying and dividing monomials. Um, this one, we're going to focus on the powers of monomials. So just as a quick review, a monomial is an expression with only one term. So you're not going to see pieces that are separated by addition and subtraction. Powers of exponents are powers raised to powers, exponents raised to another exponent. The rule's really fast. You keep the base, you multiply the exponents. So let's just get right into it. For the first one here, we have x to the second, and then we're going to raise that to the third power. So what it means is this thing in parentheses, this says how many of those you're going to have. So x to the second, x to the second, x to the second. This is what we're multiplying. This is how many times. If you go back to that last video when we talked about the rules for multiplying monomials, you keep the base and you add the exponents. All together, if I listed them all out, we would have six exponents or six x's there. But, oh, come on and write for me. That seemed like a lot of extra brain power when all I really had to do was multiply the two and the three. So x to the six, bada bing, bada boom, that's it. Number two, really fast, keep the y, multiply the exponents, four times two is eight. If you wanna write them all out, you've got y to the fourth and y to the fourth. Four y's and four y's all together would be eight y's. But why go through all that? When you have more than one variable, it's kind of like when we did the distributive property. It's just you're distributing exponents to exponents. X to the fourth raised to the fourth multiplying, it becomes X to the sixteenth. Y to the fifth raised to the fourth multiply, it becomes Y to the twentieth. You just keep the base, you multiply the exponents, that's all there is to it. Let's do a couple more just like that. Now remember, if you don't see an exponent, there's really a 1 hanging out there. So we're going to distribute exponents to exponents. That's going to become a to the 1 times 3 is 3, b to the 2 times 3 is 6, and c to the 5 times 3 is 15. Distribute exponent to exponent, there's a 1 there, to exponent. So that becomes m to the 8 times 6 is 48, n to the 4 times 6 is 24, and p to the 1 times 6 is 6. Not too bad, right? When you have coefficients in there, you just can't forget to include those. They have exponents too, they're just hiding. But there's really a 1 hiding there with a 6. That really says 6 to the 1. It just looks goofy to write it that way. So I'm going to distribute exponent to exponent to exponent. It's going to become 6 to the 2nd, x to the 6th, y to the 8th. Now, if your directions on your assignment only say to simplify, then it's okay to leave it just like that most of the time. If it says to evaluate or if your teacher specifies for simplify that you need to do this, you can go ahead and work out that actual number, the coefficient with its exponent. 6 to the second would be 36. Personally, I like when it looks a little bit cleaner. So I would like it as 36, x to the 6, y to the 8th. That kind of depends on the specific directions and or your teacher. Number 7. There's really a 1 there with the 4. So I'm going to distribute exponent to exponent. There's a 1 there to exponent to exponent. That's going to become 4 to the 3rd. A to the 5 times 3 is 15, B to the 1 times 3 is 3, and C to the 3 times 3 is 9. I'm going to clean it up a little. 4 to the 3rd means 4 times 4 times 4. That would be 64, A to the 15th, B to the 3rd, C to the 9th. 
The last one here, don't freak out just because it's a fraction. That's its own little thing with an exponent of one. So that's going to become one half to the one times five is five. M to the two times five is 10. N to the two times five is 10. When you take a fraction to an exponent, you take the top number to that exponent and also the bottom number to that exponent. One to the fifth is one. Two to the fifth is 32. So that's one over 32 times m to the 10th, n to the 10th. Or if you really want, you can go ahead and put those together because this would be like having both of those over one. You could rewrite it as m to the 10th, n to the 10th, all over 32. I would not be that picky. Again, depends on the directions, depends on your teacher. But for this particular section, I would be totally happy if we had just left it like this. So either one of those is good. The last thing that I wanted to point out, it is so important when you have negative coefficients that you keep those in parentheses if they start in parentheses. So I have a little reminder over here. Negative 5 in parentheses to the second is not equal to negative 5 not in parentheses to the second. The first one means negative 5 times negative 5. And when you take a negative times itself, it becomes a positive, right? So this really equals a positive 25. But on the second one, order of operations, PEMDAS, you have to do the exponents before any adding or subtracting. And this sign on the outside kind of acts like a subtraction sign. It means opposite of. So you would really need to do the opposite of 5 to the second or the opposite of 25 that one becomes a negative 25, so they are not the same. So the point that I'm making here is on number nine, that negative five is part of something in parentheses. So just like I kind of did with the fraction, you need to treat that like its own little thing in parentheses. Then take care of multiplying your powers. So that's gonna become negative five to the second, x to the sixth, y to the eighth. And if you need to go ahead and evaluate or simplify further, negative five to the second is 25, and then x to the sixth, y to the eighth. Okay, that is the end of this section. So as always, thank you so much for watching until the end of the video. If you need help with seventh or eighth grade math, please go ahead and subscribe. I'm not in this for subscribers, but if my videos help anybody, please feel free. That's what it's here for. Um, so my YouTube channel is Math with Luger, and you can always contact me there at my school email. Until next time, bye.